In 1973, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre shocked the world. It was raw, it was dirty, it was horrifying. Over the years, several sequels were made, none of which reflected the original's tone in any way whatsoever. This really is a bizarre series of movies, man. It's hard to even explain some of them. But our focus today isn't the 1973 classic, nor is our focus any of what followed. Instead, we'll set our sights 30 years after Leatherface made his big screen debut, when Michael Bay's company, Platinum Dunes, acquired the rights to produce a new Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Even with the first film's cinematographer, Daniel Pearl, coming back to shoot this one, there was no way to match the look or feel of the original. For this reason, nobody was interested in making a shot-for-shot -shot remake. There'd be no point. This 2003 entry would be a different kind of remake. But how would it turn out? Welcome to Scream Sequence, razor sharp reviews of your favorite creepy classics. I'm looking to make this Halloween season the best you've ever had by releasing brand new horror reviews every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday all through October. Am I going to be able to pull this off? I have no idea, but I'm going to give it my best shot. Today we kick things off by getting our hands dirty. This is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Every video here on 616 Entertainment is made possible by my supporters over on Patreon. If you enjoy the show here today, consider signing up. You'll get early access, exclusive videos and podcasts and more. Pro Wrestling Tees has the merch. As always, thank you for watching. When I think of this movie, three things immediately come to mind. Arlie Ermey, a big scary man with a chainsaw, and Jessica Biel, sweaty in a tank top. Good God in heaven. There's a great chance that she might be the peak of all humanity. Wow. Anyway, what the hell's going on here? A group of young people are on a road trip to see Leonard Skinner. They pick up a hitchhiker who seems to have had a bad day. They're all dead. Grab it. In searching for a hospital or some sort of help of any kind, our stars quickly realize this weird Texas ghost town has a lot of problems. A gigantic man with a chainsaw chases them down one by one, brutally killing as many of them as he can in as terrifying a fashion as possible. Speaking of fashion, how's this outfit? Butcher's apron, black tie, another man's face? Jesus Christ. In the end, God herself, I mean, Jessica Biel, hacks Leatherface's arm off with a fucking meat cleaver. She rescues the baby that this disgusting, inbred family stole from one of their victims, and she escapes into the night. But just barely. Also, this is not a safe way to drive with a baby. Don't do this. I first saw this movie in 2004 when my buddy Bathroom Money Tim Ewers brought it over on DVD. We were absolutely horrified, not just by the chase scenes or by Leatherface or the violence and gore, but by the case file footage, which at 13 or 14 years old, we believed was 100% real. When you're young, I guess you don't really consider the fact that if this were real, it would never be included on a commercially sold DVD. But we were idiots. The scene in question features a police officer walking through a crime scene, detailing fingernail scratches on the wall, clumps of hair. This place is loaded with nasty shit. Long story short, the footage abruptly cuts off. The narrator, which is the same guy who narrated the original film, focuses in on one lone frame, which is said to be the only known photograph of Thomas Hewitt, also known as Leatherface. This scared the shit out of us. Just absolutely horrifying. Now again, this is bullshit. It's just a movie. We didn't know until later that the based on a true story tagline for a Texas Chainsaw Massacre 
is accurate, but in the loosest sense possible. Everybody knows this by now, but if you didn't, the true story that this was based on is actually about a murderer from Wisconsin who only has two confirmed kills to his credit. He was suspected of several others, but they couldn't be verified. I feel like that discovery for us was equal parts, oh, thank God Leatherface isn't real, and, huh, that's kind of lame. In hindsight, that's very fucked up. This remake was directed by Marcus Nispel, who was eyed by Michael Bay from his work on dozens and dozens of music videos. Janet Jackson, LL Cool J, Marcus was all over the place. We'll be talking about Marcus Nispel again in the near future, as he also directed the 2009 Friday the 13th remake slash reboot, which was another project that did not attempt to recreate the original, instead opting to... Well, we'll get into that in the history of Friday the 13th Part 5. Stay tuned. Scott Kosar wrote this screenplay, which works for me almost all around. I don't like the part where Erin, played by Jessica Biel, kills her own friend. Yes, I know she was putting him out of his misery, he begged her to do it, but it doesn't work for me. I don't like it. I don't like seeing my hero do this. Kosar also wrote The Machinist, which I love, and I highly recommend. Shit, I should have covered The Machinist on this show. Maybe another time. I never needed to see what's under the mask of Leatherface, but getting a quick glimpse of him here? Holy shit. I think I'd probably rather have this guy's face too. Handsome prick. And speaking of handsome pricks, these two photographs are of the same person. This is Andrew Brynjarski, who I have no idea if I'm saying that last name correctly. Sorry, Andrew who you may know from Batman Returns or Street Fighter, the movie. He's so scary here, dude. Even at six foot five and gaining weight to hit 300 pounds, they still put him in a fat suit for this role to make him appear even larger and more bulbous. Seeing a dude this big in a full sprint with or without a chainsaw, no thanks. I hate it. I mentioned that Arlie Ermey is one of the best parts of this movie, and he really is. Director Marcus Dispel gave Ermey full creative control to ad-lib and even rewrite his dialogue. And what a beautiful decision that was. My money says your dead body's right there in that van. Excuse me, you mind getting the fuck out of my way, son? Oh, pretty little thing. Oh, I'd give me a hand here, asshole. Ah, yeah, there you go. But she's real unhappy, real sorry that you're getting fucking her blood all over your goddamn arm. I specifically love this part here where one of his lines gets stepped on while he's in the middle of a sentence, and he repeats what he was saying. It feels real because it is. Don't break Put my the guys. legs. Don't break my stuff. Put the legs. Actor Jonathan Tucker made himself throw up over 25 times during this scene where his character is being forced to put a gun in his own mouth. This wasn't even in the script. It was just an idea that he came up with on the day of the shoot. And holy shit, is it dramatic. Talk about dedication. As soon as this remake was announced, the general consensus was that it was a mistake. Even in 2003, before the prime era of message boards and long before the cesspool that is social media, Fans were already skeptical. Why? I'm sure it's gonna suck. I'm sorry. It is insane to me that this remake released over 20 years ago already. And what's even crazier is how it was received. Look on Rotten Tomatoes, look on Metacritic. You would think this movie sucks. You would think that this was another awful horror remake. Let me tell you something, here and now, it isn't. I love this movie. It's nasty, it's dirty, it's violent, Arlie Ermey is the man, Leatherface is scary, and Jessica Biel's bouncing around in a tank top. Are you kidding me? Released on October 17th, 2003, whether critics liked it or not, the movie pulled in a ridiculous amount of money. We're talking about a $9.5 million budget with a gross of over $107 million at the box office. 
I've always enjoyed this remake. I think it's excellent all the way around. Coming back to it to do this review, I hadn't seen it in quite some time, but I'm happy to report it holds up extremely well. If it's been a while, pop in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. You won't regret it. Oh, there it is, Dan Dan. Scream Sequence 2024 has officially begun. Next time out, we make a stop in Tim Burton territory for a few barbaric barber ballads. It's Sweeney Todd, the demon barber of Fleet Street. Catch the uncensored versions of anything that I had to censor here over on patreon.com slash 616 entertainment. Or if you'd like to support me right here on YouTube, you can under a channel membership. There's no need to sign up for both. They are practically the same thing. Just choose one. Thanks for watching, and until next time, I will see you soon.